What's going on guys? This is Ryan with RK Outpost and months after Birds of Prey's disastrous box office run, a box office in where it lost money and became the lowest grossing DCEU movie of all time, director Kathy Yan is out there on Twitter talking about it. And what a lot of people see this as is an effort to maybe gain a little sympathy and perhaps get a boost off of the release the Snyder Cut, release the air cut movements that are going on right now. And I want to show you guys exactly what happened and why there's now a cat fight between Kathy Yan and Grace Randolph about Birds of Prey. So let's take a look at it. It all started right here with David Ayer's tweet. Now David Ayer, who directed Suicide Squad and who had a lot of reshoots that were forced to be done in this movie, it really got massacred by the studio after they wanted to change the tone, says this. This was reshot because the tone was too dark. My first act was a normally constructed film. I took my inspiration from Nolan. There were real scenes with incredible acting between Jared and Margot. Joker was terrifying. Harley, Harley was complex. Now, Kathy Yan, again, the director of Birds of Prey, um, who's gone to make a lot of statements, and we're going to go over some of the statements she's made. I'm so sorry this happened to you, David. I know the pain. Now, she didn't specifically say, oh, this happened to me in Birds of Prey, or Warner Brothers did this to me too. But a lot of people were trying to read between the lines a little bit there. So, like, that, that is where a lot of people thought it was going, and all the responses are basically talking about Birds of Prey as well. Um, but that wasn't where it ended. Grace Randolph, who is one of the people who initially reported on these leaks, um, leaks that turned out to be basically 100% right, except for the things that she said were reshot, um, and these are the leaks here, um, she says this, I told you guys, massive reshoots largely to take out Dick Pick's storyline and add more action via Chad Stileski. I'm surprised Yan would jump on this bandwagon, though. Birds of Prey is very well reviewed by critics and has a very strong fan base that vehemently defends film as is. Hashtag DCEU. Uh, it might have a very strong small fan base that obviously not a lot of people actually went out to see this movie. Now, before we go any further, I will just say I saw Birds of Prey. I thought it was a really bad movie. I didn't think it was as woke as a lot of ma people made it out to be. The marketing for this film and people like Kathy Ann and people like Ewan McGregor that were out there talking about it did not help things. They did not help things when they talked about how it was less male gazy, how it would uh, go against uh, misogyny, all of these things. And again, we will get to Kathy Ann's statements for sure. Um, but I, I just thought it was a bad movie. Kathy Ann responds back, excuse me, you have no idea what you're talking about. It's fascinating you would deem to try when you weren't part of the process whatsoever. Now again, the focus is going to be on this dick pics storyline. Now I want to go back to these initial leaks and what we heard. Um, so these were back in November. Um, right here, Cass is captured by Roman and Harley... Cass is captured by Roman and Harley pursues him to the Gotham Pier. Roman wears his black mask during the fight and in the midst of the battle, it gets burned into his face. Something that didn't necessarily happen in Birds of Prey. The diamond is retrieved and is revealed to have contained a nude statue of Roman all along. This was apparently changed to information on his criminal empire. And that is indeed true. It was not... It was no longer this nude statue or this information that was showing nude statue. That is where this whole dick pic storyline came because obviously the nude statue of him is in the nude and supposedly he was embarrassed by it or something like that. That is why people are talking about dick pics in regards to Birds of Prey. But that was changed. And also, spoiler alert, Black Mask also gets murdered at the end of this movie. Uh, he does not go on to just have the mask burned onto his face. So there were definite changes made to this movie. Um, Kathy Ann says, you have no idea what we're talking about. Grace says, no reporter is ever part of the process. They're different jobs, but everything I reported is common knowledge. With many insiders, I brought it to the public. I gave your film a good review, and I said you have a strong fan base. So logically, there should be no problem here. Now, um, <laughs> there's obviously a lot of uh, bitterness from Kathy. Grace is trying to smooth it over a little bit. Um, Kathy says, and I thank you for the support, but let's set the record straight. There were never dick pics. Your pet, you pet, now this is where it got weird for me because I never heard part of this at all. You peddling a P-E-D-O rumor is not journalism. 
peddling any gossip is not journalist. I know. I was one. I was a journalist. So yes, uh, now I'm a shitty filmmaker. I uh, wonder how good you were as a journalist. Grace Randolph. Multiple reporters confirmed that story after I reported it. Said it was a said it was great and should be kept in the film and didn't like it taken out. And dick pics aren't P-E-D-O stuff. Plus, as a former journalist, you should realize the optics of now pretending you suddenly have a better yan cut. And exactly right. Now listen, uh, I think that Grace has been right about a lot of stuff. She's also been wrong about a lot of stuff. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan. I do appreciate uh, the things she's done to kind of uh, get the Snyder Cut rumors out there, especially over recent months. But this right here, I love this from Grace. You should realize the optics of now pretending you suddenly have a better Yan Cut. Exactly. That's exactly what I thought when I saw her initial tweet. Um, and then... Uh, then she goes on grace talks a little bit about stuff uh here's a receipt things like that but the conversation did not stop um it did not stop now where is this here this person right here daniel rickman says wtf don't bring me into this also there was never any dick pics i got used to saying that too but it was a naked statue and was related more to roman's character being a valuable art collector and well very well done nothing p-e-d-o about it like you tried to claim grace randolph says your tweet literally says dick pics daniel welcome to the party and this is the receipts they're talking about from daniel rickman another source on this um and black mass being explicitly gay as far as I can tell, rather than dick pics, it was pictures of a naked statue. So all Jan had to say was she misinterpreted the plot point and explained. Not call out Grace to say she has no idea what she's talking about. Grace wasn't that far off. Um, and of course, Kathy Ann would go on to verify exactly this. Exactly that about the statue. So I feel like Kathy Ann's being a little disingenuous here when she's saying you have no idea what you're talking about and that there were never any dick pics. Because she knows exactly what people are talking about. Um right here someone says um that's not true it's because grace retweets this the storyline was that you could see roman's dick on the statue and the picture in the diamond and he was upset it looked small so that's why he was so fixated on getting it back a picture of a statue's dick especially in this context is a dick pic and i've been saying that a lot um kathy yan that is not true there has never been any discussion around the size of Roman's dick. I can't believe I even have to write that. The original script called for an image of Roman as Michelangelo's David. You know, art. If that's a dick pic, then the Louvre is full of them. Grey Ghost asks, Honest question. If the pic was tasteful, why he was why was he so hell-bent on getting it back? It was a joke to show how narcissistic he is. It didn't work. We all agreed, so we rewrote some 80 yard. That's it. Absolutely no reshoots were devoted to this nonsense issue. Um, I, I don't know if that's true because obviously that's the way it was. Um, that's the way it was originally let out and people screened it with that in it. And then it did change. So was it all just editing to give them what they want? I guess that could be what they said, that no reshoots were devoted to it. But 100%, that is changed from the final product. So I think that Kathy Yan is doing her best to kind of spin it and attack, uh, and attack, um, what's her name, Grace Randolph right now. And I specifically wanted to go to one certain point and compare it to the way that Zack Snyder handled someone. So let's go to Kathy Ann's profile, tweets and replies. Um, so a lot of people, Jimmy Palmetti, Gail Simone, all showing their support for their for their sister, Kathy Ann. Um, this I really wanted to point out um, right here. Kathy Ann says, Meanwhile, articles like the below are written off your scoops. Congratulations on being the scum of journalism. And this is a story not written by Grace Randolph that says Birds of Prey has pedo elements. Uh, again, not written by Grace Randolph. Um, but Kathy Ann says scum of journalism, whereas Zack Snyder, let's look at the man, the myth, the legend. How Zack Snyder responded when he felt someone was being disingenuous. At, at, this is when Scott Medelson says, uh, when, when the length of Justice League, the three hour and 44 minutes came out, Scott Mendelson says, this is almost certainly an assembly cut, which is always excessively long because that's what an assembly cut is. Someone who's been denying the Snyder cut for a long, long time. Zack Snyder says, Scott Mendelson, the assembly cut was nearly five hours long. Just calmly, simply corrects him, provides him with the facts. Uh, whereas you have Kathy Yan, 
Uh, Colin Grace Randolph, the scum of journalism. Two very different ways that you're going to get your point across as far as I'm concerned. And I did want to just briefly touch on what Kathy Ann said about her movie and why I feel like she's using this opportunity to try to play victim. Um, this is one quote from a Hollywood Reporter interview with Kathy Ann talking about the box office and a couple scenes. Quotes from Kathy Ann. I know that the studio had really high expectations for the movie, as we all did. There was also undue expectations on a female-led movie. And what I was most disappointed in was this is perhaps it proved it we weren't ready for this yet. Uh, forgets to mention that Wonder Woman made nearly a billion dollars at the box office. I'm not quite sure it's the same studio. Uh, she is buddy-buddy with Patty Jenkins. In between all her tweets about how cops are absolutely terrible, uh, she's also been retweeting a lot of people like Patty Jenkins and Gail Simone, people like that. So um, I'm not sure how she forgets that Patty Jenkins made a nearly billion-dollar female-focused movie. But Yan tells The Hollywood Reporter, that was an extra burden that... As a woman of color director, I already had on me anyway. The uh, the absolute gall, like just yes. Uh, listen, it failed because we made a female movie. We were we were stunning and brave. We made a female led movie. I'm a woman of color for God's sake. Of course, you have to put it in that lens when you're talking about the failures of your movie at the box office, Kathy. And people didn't like this movie it, for the most part. Evidently, Grace thinks it was okay. Um, I, for one, despise it. It's my least favorite DCU movie. Um, she complains, or they try to cover from that article talking about the budget. It had the same budget as Shazam. Shazam made around $350 million. This movie made $200 million. They even tried to change the title. Some theaters tried to change the title to get more people to come, and it just didn't work. Um, but Kathy Ann out there fighting with Grace Randolph, I thought it was interesting, especially in comparison to how she reacted versus how Zack Snyder has acted through this entire thing. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, share this video out there, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. And a huge shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram? Check out the description below. You'll find links to my P.O. Box and my Patreon as well. And I'll talk to you guys later.